But let me begin with you, Waziri, because we've come so far establishing institutions that are supposed to be uh, helping us uh, without those that may have integrity questions, mm -hmm. but they still manage to find a way uh, to the ballot. What then? Because now the final stage appears to be the voter on the 9th of August. Is it even a possibility that we can have these questionable individuals being locked out of elective offices? Well, once we give to the voter uh, the, the final verdict and you have really politicized the whole issue, then it fails the test of time. Mm -hmm. Because the voter is, is, is a product of our social dynamics. Once the voter takes a certain political angle to a challenge, then it fails to be objective. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I would have expected the government institutions, whether it is uh, CUE, IBC, or ESEC, to have effective communication among themselves so that we have um, a clear issue on whether somebody qualifies or does not qualify. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Chapter 6 is going to be a nullity if we are going to continue uh, floating the same <coughs> chapter uh, year in, year out. If somebody does not have a degree, he doesn't have a degree. And if you have it, you must demonstrate that I have it and it's here. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, why do we need to subject people to a merry-go-round when it would have been easy for all these institutions of government to communicate and come up uh, with a slate of candidates that have qualified mm -hmm. or made the threshold? <coughs> Remember the 241. Right. 166 are people who pretended to want to run for office and yet they did not resign on the 9th of February, mm -hmm. six months before the election, as required by the law. Mm -hmm. So if you want to flow the law, you want to earn salary up to April under the guise that uh, perhaps when you are appointed as a running mate, uh, then that's the time you resign. Mm -hmm. That is really lack of integrity. You right. must choose either to be within the time limits mm -hmm. or uh, to say that you are going to flout the constitution all through. Right. Yep. And, and Vincent, because, I mean, the ESCC continues to speak about it. And you can tell the frustration uh, mm. from the CEO of that institution. Mm. W what is this missing link that we need to fix? Because IBC will tell you that, uh, especially if you're running for a member of parliament, unless you've exhausted all avenues of appeal, especially in questions of uh, criminality. Mm. <clears throat> but then there is not a clear measure of integrity, especially for running for office, that IBC can firmly rely on? I think um, there the, there are two uh, ways of looking at this conversation. Uh, some are around the issue of uh, uh, certificates. Uh, mm -hmm. The the first part uh, will be the issue of um, process mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, what 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 are our processes speaking uh, to each other. For example, uh, if I present my papers to uh, DCI. Mm -hmm. uh, the expectation is that the position that I will get from DCI at the end of the day uh, is the final position and it will matter to the process. So for me, I think uh, uh, that, that is an issue of process that you, 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 you're seeing. The, the other thing is also uh, the whole conversation around um, the place of uh, uh, merit, the place of performance, the, the place of uh, uh, academics in our leadership. Mm -hmm. Some, are, I believe uh, that um, uh, as, as a practitioner in the space of leadership, uh, there, is the place of, uh, there is the place of education. Mm -hmm. But also, we also appreciate that education uh, is not also everything when it comes to leadership. That's mm -hmm. the second thing I'm trying to prosecute. Then the final part that I would also want to point out is uh, the issue of the role of citizenship in all this process. That it is important that even as we push, advocate for the implementation of Chapter 6, that right. the citizens also have a voice in this process. So um, I would say that uh, it, uh, certificates should matter. Uh, institutions that are responsible for this process should also play their role. But also I want to po point out uh, some, the element of uh, 
speaking to the ESCC uh, to elevate this conversation to the place of the strategic. The challenge at the moment is that uh, we already in a political season. Mm -hmm. It's very possible that uh, the very important agenda they are trying to prosecute on the place and the integrity of certification is missed because of the political context. Because you can easily be painted, but why are you saying this at this point? Uh, 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 you, you, ha you, we are in an election season and you can already see the challenges across. So an important conversation is likely to be missed because of also uh, the conversation. But, but so for me, what are they to do? Because IBC gave a list of, I think, 21,000 aspirants. They, 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 they looked at them and they, they came they, up. They, it is very simple for ESCC. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you know that you had a, is somebody, uh, you see the, the, the requirements to run for office, part of them was meeting chapter six requirements. And it includes the self-declaration certificate. What is so hard for ESCC, for example, to say we are so-and-so, we are not giving you a certificate? I, when you go to DCI and you provide your but, fingerprints. But, uh, Vincent, I'm yes. not sure they give a certificate. I thought they, you they, just, they, they just they, fill a form. See, but ESCC at that point, if they say that uh, they, 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 nothing stops them, because if you compare the form that you issue to ESCC and the form that you issue to uh, uh, the DCI, the Certificate of Good Conduct, uh -huh. if if I go to DCI and I give out my fingerprints and there is an issue of uh, around my, uh, my, 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 my fingerprints and my uh, crim criminal record, mm -hmm. they, I will not get a certificate of good, good conduct. Right. Why, why can't the ASC design a simple form to say, uh, so-and-so, we don't have an issue with you, so-and-so, we have an issue with you, so that then you empower the next institution. So for me, I, th I think um, as much as I, I hear the message that uh, ESCC is passing in this process, I believe they have everything it takes to raise the bar in the engagement to the, to the next level. Okay. And uh, joining us now is Jim Devo, who is an advocate of the High Court. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. I've Thank not, you for uh, having seen me. I've in a long time. <laughs> on the same panel. Uh, but um, he raises an important question, which I'm not certain that uh, the law allows ESCC to issue a certificate of integrity, if I may call it so. Mm. Uh, but what are those weaknesses that you find that going to if this election is lost on matters taking care of that, what then must we do, at least in 2027, to ensure that people that have questionable character, um, academic credentials are a question, integrity is a question, what must we do so that IBC has a stronger point to say that uh, we cannot clear you? The correct position, as you have said, is that EACC cannot clear a candidate. EACC even with your self-declaration, all they do is that they collect information. And if there raises, there's something that raises a red flag, they use your self-declaration form as a starting point to do investigations mm -hmm. to see whether or not uh, what you said was correct. So the, the information that you give, from, it's almost like self-incrimination. You sort of give the first information that now will inform the rest of the investigation. Mm -hmm. And so at no point does somebody get a certificate of clearance from the EACC. And that's what the IBC was pointing out. It was like, you know what, yeah, thank you very much. We see your concerns. But unless what you're saying is accompanied by the process of investigation and prosecution and conviction, we can't act just on the part of, you know what, we are looking into this person regarding this, this and that. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do then? Maybe it's a question of looking at the law to determine, OK, what, how we have crafted, crafted it. Does it fit, is it fit for purpose? Is it giving us the intended result? Mm -hmm. I have always argued that what Kenyans intended in Chapter 6 and what is translated in the Leadership and Integrity Act don't match. Now, to bridge that gap, there needs to be legislative action. Mm -hmm. There needs to be something that's going to change in our laws to move the needle. The EACC has a duty not just to, to investigate uh, I issues. Mm -hmm. They have a duty like what they did yesterday, to actually rope in other people to help in this fight against corruption, to engage in civic education so that people know what to accept and what to shun. So if they tell leaders, if they told the public, the following we think have an issue, you as citizens mm -hmm. choose wisely, then they've played their part. But okay. for, for, from, for all intents and purposes- how effective is that? Mm -hmm. It is effective because there are those people who will listen to them and they'll be minded to say, you know what, let me think about this choice one more time. The, my biggest criticism in this entire process is that we leave everything off too late. 
by the time we are starting these investigations, and it's what, 40 days to the elections, it's 50 days to the elections, at that time people have heightened sense of, um, the, the, the lines are drawn, the, the positions are hard and fast, mm -hmm. people have already invested in the process. At that point when you start saying disqualify this one, disqualify this one, it's a problem. So I think some of these timelines need to be moved a year in advance. Get these clearances with time for you to do, go to court, do whatever, whatever, so that by the time we're coming to the final list, 